shot my old man when he made it. And when I turned 16, I was surprised at how much the old man had lost. <coughs> Church of Christ. Welcome out there on Facebook. Um, do we have anybody online yet? Or am I talking to myself? <laughs> anyway, welcome. Here at Faith Family, we are an open and affirming congregation. We would like nothing more than all of God's children to come and worship with us and celebrate our loving God. Um, here at Faith Family, we have a little saying. And, and we truly mean this. We truly mean this when we say it. Because it doesn't matter what path you are, as long as you are seeking to be the best that you can be, seeking God as you know God, then you are welcome here. Our little saying goes, no matter where you are on life's journey or where you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. Amen. All are welcome. All are welcome here. Um, it is the beginning of Advent. Um, we're going to go ahead and do our Advent uh, candle lighting to start the Advent season. Happy New Year. Uh, As we light this first candle, we begin the season of Advent. May the light of this candle, along with the other lights and the stars of this holy season, remind us of the true light, Jesus the Christ, the true star of Christmas. From Matthew, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi, wise men from the east, came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay homage. The Magi, important busy, were stopped in their tracks by something most people wouldn't even notice. Out of the countless stars, one star in particular claimed their attention. Following that star, they were led at last to the true star, the bright morning star. God has come to earth in person. Jesus, the promised redeemer of the world, the true star of Christmas, has finally come.
Thank you, Jackie and Wesley. Our call to worship is We Three Kings. Thank you, most loving God, for waking us up today. This we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the season of Advent may increase our love for and devotion to our Creator, our neighbors, and each other. This we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. O oh God, we pray for the church. We pray that it may continue to be a beacon of hope and love to the world. May it be a place of refuge for those who are lost, and a source, of, a source of strength for those who are weary. This we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your blessings for all who lead and preach and teach. We especially pray for our pastor, Pastor Ed, as clergy seek to do your will and guide us through our spiritual and worldly journey through Advent. Until the day we celebrate Christmas together, this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, that it may be filled with peace and justice. May the leaders of nations work together to create a better future for all people. And may we strive to live in harmony with one another. This we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that peace, peace on earth, be the will of God. That justice and memory and mercy will bring an end to war and terror. We pray for the freedom of all peoples, that they may live in unity with their neighbors, and that their humanity may be respected and they live without fear. This we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, too, for an end to violence in our country, particularly an end to the anti-Semitic violence our Jewish brothers and sisters deserve to live free and in peace. Prejudice of any kind has no place in our society, whether it be anti-Jewish, anti-Muslim, anti-Black, anti-gay, anti-trans, the list goes on. We pray that your love will blossom among us. This we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who are sick, that they may be healed and restored to full health, that they may find comfort in the knowledge that they are not alone, and may be surrounded by the love and support of family members. We pray for those fighting various addictions. Prayers for Stefan Yuntham, whose family and family on the passing of their father, Robert, at age 96 this past Friday. Healing prayers for Sharon Piazza, who suffered a severe deep cut and required surgery, and uh, also had a fractured tibia in her right leg following a fall during the Plant City Christmas Parade Friday evening. We ask prayers for Paulette, wife of Bill, on her surgery, shoulder surgery, tomorrow morning. We ask prayers for our friend on an upcoming quad bypass heart surgery. 
Prayers for Barb and her caregivers, Nancy and Chris. Prayers for their, our snowboard friends, Patty and Frank, and daughter, Allie. We ask travel prayers for Vicki and Lou as they return to Florida. Oh God, we ask you to hear these prayers and all those that we have been asked to pray. This we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Oh God, we ask you to be with us this Advent season, and may we help spread your love by keeping a smile on our face and in our heart. This we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Now's the time in our service that we get to share God's love and peace with one another. Um, love and peace to you out there on Facebook. Love and peace to you over there, Scott. Um, in Facebook, if you want to type in your love and peace at the, on the screen at the bottom there, that would be most appreciated. Love and peace to you. Please stand, share the love and peace with everybody around you. Be with you. Peace be with you. The same travels. We'll hang it for you. Peace. Peace. Next time, bring a band. Yeah. Love and peace, sweetie. Love and peace. 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 Love celebrities come on and they eat incre increasingly hot wings until they get to the hottest hot sauce ooh, ooh. and they interview them they ask them questions so one of the things they play is called and it's blocking my view okay explain the gram so they scour these celebrities instagram social medias and they put up a picture and they say okay explain this what's going on here oh gosh so i hope we're still all uh, Facebook friends after this. <laughs> don't unfriend me, I promise. I'll be gentle. So the first one is, you don't ask somebody to do something you wouldn't do yourself, right? So there's a picture. Me and Ed, some of you may remember Chaplain Yarman when he came last yeah. year, and oh, his yeah. Yeah. saint of a wife who puts up with him, her name was Linda. <laughs> so we were in the salt mines in Birch's Garden, Germany, and they used to um, actually mine salt and they use these slides to put the bags on to get them out. So they turned them into a tourist attraction, and we were all, well, I wasn't expecting it to be quite so steep. So you see the look on my face is kind of, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah, it's not Yep. <laughs> Everybody's going to pile up on you when they get to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, there was a long, there was a long flat, so. flat spot. Oh, that I know that. So yeah. that was my one of those pictures they take when you're least expecting it. Yeah. Okay. Next up, who's it going to be? Uh. It's you. So this is uh, E, <laughs> and this is uh, who was my soldier at the time? Yarwood. Uh, Yarwood. And there's another soldier back there. You can't really see them because their head's buried. But uh, we're waiting to be deployed. And that's one of the things that you learn to do in the military. You learn to wait. And you learn to sleep anywhere you can. So that's... Why is there straw on the ground? That, that's not straw. Oh. No, no, that is straw. We are, that is, that, we are actually outside. Okay. And we're on the ground. And we found... 
pile all of our stuff and we leave it up against the next. So that's and, a much and younger. In the major. That's What's that? You're in the major. Yes. That's a much younger ad. All right. Who's next? Uh, this one might get me in trouble. Oh no, this is Jack. <laughs> wow. Those are my two granddaughters, the love of my life. They are both in college in Mississippi, and I get to see them on the 17th of this month. Oh. 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 I think this one might get me in trouble. Yep, there we go. Uh, oh. Uh. oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Those are great. Oh, yes. Okay, so this is, uh, this is one of the... Uh, uh, Halloween parties at, at um, uh, that they throw every year. They uh, at the, this one was, uh, I guess, it, the first one at the uh, uh, Jewish place, Jewish community. Oh, okay. Thing. okay. And uh, the oh, it's supposed to be called the sixteen. Yeah. Sixteen. I know. Sixteen. Oh, that's been back. I anyway, really, I really went back. It's, it's Halloween. Me. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a scary. You don't do dress up like this all the time. <laughs> and he's holding the communion cup. Oh, there you go. Okay, what about this one? Oh, that's you. <laughs> that is relaxing at a very famous beach. I think it's the Grand Cayman. I think. Oh, yeah. He's saying yeah. yes. Scott says yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. That is uh, a cat that I no longer have. He's been gone for a while. And he's staring at one of my watercolor paintings. <laughs> Did you paint it? Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh, nice. Nice. See, you learn something new about he's Hill today. She can he's paint. getting it up close and personal. Uh, <laughs> smell the paint. Oh, that's bad. All right, so we've got to go back to this guy here. Oh, oh isn't that cute? That is actually the stole that, that you all right. gave me when I was ordained. And this is my dog. And that was the start of, I put that on my Facebook, that was the start of Pride Week. And so I've got this picture, and I've got her ready to do some Richard Sims jazzercise and whatever. So you can probably see how kids would like this. They would think it was funny going through their kid, you know, their 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 peers' Instagrams and finding funny pictures. So that's kind of some of the stuff that we do as ice. We will do as icebreakers once we have some kids. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And, and the, the whole idea is to connect with people. You know, you show your pictures, right. explain the picture. Why did you put that on your Facebook or Instagram? And stuff like that. It just gets to know each yeah. other. Yeah, because because youth ministry is about relational ministry. It's not about teaching them what they're doing wrong. It's about building relationships and building bonds. And then when things in their lives happen and they need, they they have that relationship with you already, and they're going to come to you instead of making hopefully some bad decisions. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank All you. right. Thank you. Thank you. Reading today is Corinthians 1, verses 3 through 9. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanksgiving. I always thank God for you because of God's grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you in strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, is faithful. Jackie. Can you go back to the to the verses again? Uh, I just wanted to point out one thing. I our language is, is so wonderful. And uh, I love commas. See, 
you've got a comma here, and you've got a comma here. And usually when you have two commas in a sentence, you can like take that phrase out of the sentence, and you come up with, God is faithful. And that's important. God is faithful. Humanitarianism, or uh, humanism, as some people call it, says that humans will evolve to become better and better. This is not happening. At least it doesn't look like it's happening. It is as if we are becoming, the more we become civilized, the more the world's population grows, the more and more selfish people become. As if the existence of some one other people somehow threatens <coughs> our life or our very existence, or at least threatens our uh, hopes of getting good things out of life. The truth of the matter is that if we all work together, for the common good of all people, all of humanity, the better off we would all be. But this fear of someone else getting more than us reigns in the world today. You see this? You see people getting jealous at their workplaces when someone overcomes something and gets a award for something. I don't understand that. I mean, myself, when, when I see someone of my fellow workers or, or somebody getting a, a, a award, um, there might be a little bit of jealousy, but that jealousy, it, it causes me to work harder, to be a better person, and not to like try to bring that person back down or to, to say discouraging things about that person. See, the humanity, the, the humanity evolving, it isn't happening in the world today. It's competitive. What do we call it? The rat race. It's a mad world. We have to do better. We have to do better than, not do better to do better for yourself, but to do better so you can be above the Smiths next door. While people are being charitable, there are many ministries out there. Many people are leaving religion. Why do you think that is? There's a lot of answers to that. And they're probably all right to some degree. But it used to be that religion was the catalyst for this evolution, this doing better. And people would come together and worship the God of their choice, the God of their religion, and that motivated them to go on and do better and better things. But the religion is not the end-all and the be-all, but the path that we take to becoming better. And we see this today. People are leaving the churches to go and to do their ministry elsewhere. The church's ministries are being replaced by secular ones. Many people say, I'm not a religious person, but I'm a good person, I'm a spiritual person, and I want to do good. Many feel that their, their contribution to, this is their contribution to humanity, whereas the church seems, seems to only care about the church. And so they focus their ministries not with the church, but in some face, cases against the church. They want to feel good of becoming a better person. They feel that they're a better person because they are involved in these other ministries. But the truth is, 
that they're seeking to do good without responsibilities. Think about this. If I have a ministry in the church and we all come together and we do it, there's a responsibility there because I still have to be kind to you. I still have to be, treat you with respect, treat you as you were an equal. Whereas if I go someplace and volunteer, show up, do my ministry, and leave, where's the responsibility in that? Being there on time? Many feel that they excuse me, they want to feel good without the responsibility. They think, if I do something for someone, then that makes me feel good. It isn't for the benefit of whole of humanity. It becomes, so I feel good about myself. Many philosophers say that there is no such thing as true altruism. Because even when you do something good without the direct benefit of riches, uh, some kind of material gain, there's still, you receive a shot of that dopamine, that feeling that, hey, I'm doing something good, and that becomes your reward. So you're doing it to make yourself feel good? Or are you doing it for the benefit of all humanity? Think about this. Have you ever gone shopping? None of you went shopping? <laughs> you go shopping. You get to Walmart. You can't park your car in that parking spot. Why? Because there's three carts in that parking spot. So you have to go three carts, the three parking spots over. And you look around and you see all these carts. Not one of them are in the cart corral. Because, well, that would take too much time for somebody to walk two spaces over and put it in. But don't let me start on that. Hold on. That's not the point here. The point is, when you come out to your car and you unload your cart and you look and you go ahead and you take your cart back to the cart corral past all those other cards. Are you doing ministry? Are you doing good for humanity? Yes, you are. You can't fix everything. But you could have picked up the three other cards. But there wasn't three. There was ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, and so you need to go in and go straight to the, to the uh, HR of that Walmart and get you a little vest so that you can go ahead and do your job, which is picking up the cars. But see, you're one person. So you do what is right by yourself. And you take that car to the car corral. And hopefully, other people will see you doing that and feel the need to do that as well. See, it's not your job. And you cannot, we cannot fix the world all by ourselves. No one person can fix the world all by themselves. And I said, no one person. I know what you're thinking. But Jesus did. Jesus showed us how. Jesus showed us how. He took his cart and he put it in the corral. And we saw that. And we said, that's the right thing to do. And so we try to emulate him. As we do that, hopefully people will try to emulate not us, but him. But they see us doing the right thing. The truth is we cannot fix the world by ourselves. You can only do what you can do and hope that others will follow suit. See, the point is, without God, without a sense of God and a focus on this idea of always doing better, always trying to make yourself better, all we are doing is pulling people out of the river to, to steal a phrase from Bishop uh, Desmond Tutu in his parable. 
Are you familiar with that parable? I think I've said it before, where yeah. people in the village see people in the river, and they run out, and they start pulling people out. Well, all of a sudden, there's more people in the river, and more people in the river, so they got more people. And then finally, someone says, stop. Let's go find out why they're falling in the river. And so they go upstream. And that's what Desmond Tutu says, Bishop Desmond Tutu says. He says, um, I lost my spot. He says, uh, there comes a point where we need to stop just pulling people out of the river. We need to go upstream and find out why they're falling. Now, I want, I want to point out, there. I, I bolded it in my, in my notes. It says, we need to stop just pulling people out of the water. See, that's important. Because when we do ministry, that's basically what we're doing. When we, we feed the hungry, we uh, clothe the, the homeless, and we do the things that we do in our ministries, we are pulling people out of the water. But... We don't need to just do that. We also need to go up there and find out why they are and try to fix that problem. See, it's about doing better, not just for ourselves, but for everyone. There's no way. Oh, I used to think that when you help people, the idea or the goal was to lift them up. Somehow they're not, they they throughout their life, they have fallen to a level in their life that is less than what you have. And so I always thought that our goal was to lift them up and put them on equal ground with us so that everyone is equal. But that isn't the end. That isn't the goal. The goal isn't equality because there's still a need to continue on and do better. And see, that's what we are here in the church. We are trying to do better as individuals, and we come here to raise each other up equally, and now collectively we encourage, we love, we, we do whatever we can to help each other as we all strive to do better. Reminds me of a story. When I was in uh, ministry up in Kentucky, um, Cindy and I found uh, a family came to us and was asking for help because they uh, their refrigerator broke. <coughs> and their refrigerator broke, and it had three kids, three step-step boys, three, two, and less than one. And they had no way of keeping the milk. They had a freezer. And they put the milk in the freezer, and they freeze it. And of course, when they get it out, thaw it out, that was it. They, they, they couldn't refreeze it, and so they were losing money on the milk and, and other things like that. So we went ahead, and we found a place that does refurbished uh, refrigerators. We went ahead and purchased one and gave it to them. And the people of our congregation, some of the people in our congregation came to us and said, that was a waste of money. Why did you do that? I'm like, because it was the right thing to do. And they looked out and they pointed to the congregation and they said, where are those people? You did that for them and they don't even come to church. As if doing that was the whole reason, the whole purpose was to get people to come to church. No, the whole reason was to build a community. Those people know that we care about them. Even though they don't come to our church, they know we care about them. That was the purpose, bringing them up to our equal levels. And hopefully, they would become part of our community and we all do better together. The goal is not to get people to church. The goal is to have them understand this concept of trying to do better. It is not even... For those um, you're giving assistance to, the ones that you're helping, to help them up to your level. But to create that community of equality, to create a nation that is seeking to make the entire world a better place. Create a world filled with compassion, 
for all. Now, this is an inline sermon. Um, the other day, I saw clips. I don't watch the news, fake news station. But they had some lady on there, and she was ranting and raving about a Santa Claus that Target is selling. It's probably sold out now. We want one, but we can't get one. Um, it's a Santa in a wheelchair. Oh, did I mention that he's a black Santa in a wheelchair? And this blonde-haired, needless to say, white woman is ranting and raving. That's not Santa Claus. Who would want to buy something like that? That's not the tradition that we uphold. That, and I'm thinking, that little black child who's in a wheelchair, how much, how precious is that? But the idea that if it doesn't pertain to me, it should be not on this earth. That's not all. That's not all. Our ministries and the things that we do, the goal is for all people to come into a community of equality. A community where you have compassion for everyone. I think that too often we have reverted to this idea that we are animals. Maybe it's because we evolved from animals, but we evolved. Evolved. That means we're on the next level up from animals. And being so, we should act like our lives should not just be about surviving, getting all out of life that we can give, but preparing the future generations to be even better than what we were. To always be better. Humans trying to be God to negate, to, to, to Say again. People, humans, trying to be God in a negative light. That's a Bible story, by the way. Tower of Babel. Why did they build the Tower of Babel? To reach heaven. To reach heaven. Because they wanted to be like God. Not because they wanted to be like God as a good thing but because they wanted to be like God so they can do all the selfish stuff that they want to do in their lives. And God would, tell them, would not tell them that that is not proper to do. This is the power of working together. If people came together and God saw that they came together and he changed their language, that's the story. But working together is powerful trying to encourage each other to always be better is powerful. That's our evolution as human beings. This is our hope, to become better and better. And as our generations go on, as a species, as the human race, we should always be striving to do better and better for all of humanity. Yes. For all of humanity to act together, that's what we were created for. That's what we were created for. Only through hope in God's faithfulness, only in hope that we can continue to do better, only in hope that each and every one of us will try to do better so that People will see us and they will say, that's how I want to be. No, I want to be even better than that. I want to do good. I want my ministries to not only reach my community, I want it to reach the entire state. I want it to reach the entire nation. Because it's about doing good for all. 
And it's not until all are doing good that creation is fulfilled. Our hope is in God while we continue to seek to do better in our own lives and do better for those around us. Sometimes I get frustrated when I think of how little we have changed. We're reading a book in, uh, in uh, for our book club, a book written by Martin Luther King Jr. 60s, 1960s. Mm -hmm. Nineteen sixty-seven, and here we are in two thousand twenty-three, and the words that he says still rings true today. And he also can do. Are we evolving, or are we trying to be the animals that we think of? Do better in our own lives. Amen. 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 Let's go ahead, as, as Wesley brings the offering forward, let us sing the uh, doxology. that you give us in our lives. We ask a blessing upon this offering. May it be uh, used throughout this creation to allow people to know that they are made in the image of you. All people are important to you, and all people are loved. In Christ's name, amen. 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 On the night that Jesus would offer himself as a sacrifice for all, he called all that he loved and those that loved him and ate a meal with them. A community of believers, a community of love. During that meal, he took bread and he broke it. And he, and he said, this is my body broken for you. 
this is my heart broken open for all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, he took the cup, he blessed it, and he said, Take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant, a covenant of love, a love for all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. Pray with me. God, we thank you for the ability to come into your house, sit at your table, and drink and eat the meal that you've prepared for us. We understand that you have shown us the way. You have shown us the way that our lives of love is the best way, the way that you would have creation. We ask a blessing upon these elements of this supper. May it nourish our bodies, both physically and spiritually, that we would all become one, one body, the body of Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. As a sign of unity, let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Um, feel free to use whatever language that you would like for that is closest to your heart, excuse me, uh, for God. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. That's my ushers to come. We're going to we're going to do communion the same way that we've been doing for the last week. If you want to come up on the right hand side and take communion, and then afterwards you can return to your seat, where I will offer a blessing if you would like. prayer of thanksgiving. God, we thank you for all the blessings that you've given us. We thank you that we can come together as one body and eat this spiritual meal that you have prepared for us, bringing us so much closer together and sharing in the love that you have for us. We thank you for that love. We thank you that you sent that love to be an example for us. In Christ's name.
place of heart and rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless me. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. All right, right. So, uh, do we still need some people to do Advent readings? No, we've got everybody to do the Advent. Great, good. All right, so that's announcement off the list. Okay. Um, those of you who have not uh, yet got your tickets, don't forget there is a Christmas social event, which is the Gay Men's Course of Tampa Bay Christmas show entitled Let There Be Peace. It is Friday, December the 8th, this coming Friday at 8 p.m. Um, in at Allen, Allendale, Allendale uh, Church in, in St. Petersburg. Uh, you need to go to the uh, Gay Men's Chorus of Tampa Bay website to purchase your tickets in advance. Um, we have our Faith Family United Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas Church gathering uh, for Christmas on Saturday, December the 9th at uh, uh, Joe and Scott and Mama Kay's house. It's a potluck dinner. Uh, with a Christmas tree ornament exchange. So uh, if you can, uh, please sign up so that we know how many people are coming and what side dish you are intending to bring. And uh, you may want to bring a Christmas tree ornament or, a Chris or an ornament exchange. Um, so please do that. But I don't know if I need to say any more than that, but I think everybody pretty much knows what's going on there. Um, so the ornament exchange, by the way, is uh, you pull your name out of a hat, the, the, all the names of people who brought ornaments will go into a hat, you pull that name, take that ornament home with you to put on your tree, and then you pray to that person for the rest of the year. And we'll be doing some Christmas carol sing-alongs too, so prepare your voices. <laughs> okay. Book Club is starting on January of 2024. Uh, please let Cindy know if you want to participate, and she will add you to the Facebook group to facilitate planning and discussion. Don't forget, this is not a weekly kind of book club thing. It's going to be a, a discussion at the very end of the, of the uh, reading. But there may be some little tidbits that go by on the Facebook page uh, as we're reading along. But the book is Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community, as Pastor Ed has, uh, touched on during his uh, sermon today. Uh, it's by Mark, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Finding your ministry. If you have an idea or a passion for helping to make the world a better place, let us know, and we can help you with creating, continuing, or expanding that into ministry if you would like to see that come to full blossom. And here are some ideas of the ones we already have, or maybe the food angels, clothing the homeless, boots and blankets, if you are interested in that, see Jill. Youth group volunteers. We're still looking for some youth group volunteers, aren't we, Cindy? Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, don't forget, you need a background. 
clearance on that. So uh, please say send me about that. Still looking for that music leader. I don't know why we sing so well. <laughs> no, we're still looking for a music leader and musician. So uh, we have a, a job description on that uh, on our website. And uh, if you just keep spreading the word, spreading the word, and sooner or later, you just may come across somebody who says, oh, oh, that sounds like a great thing. So it's a paid position. So that helps too to let people know about that. Community action. With the launch of our Fall in Action campaign, we encourage our community to show up at every school board meeting across the state for the months of September and October. Over a thousand individuals across 40 counties in Florida have signed up so far, and we are making their voices heard. And it's not too late to sign up to join the movement. We are seeking a momentum change, but we still need you to sign up, recruit, and engage. The school board meetings are the third Thursday third Tuesday of every month at 4 o'clock. That's the Hillsborough County School Board meetings, and we still encourage people to show up. Um, you can check the school board website to uh, find out what the agenda is going to be in advance, uh, so you can know whether or not there's a topic that we may need to support the school board on. Uh, and I'm, we're going to have some more discussion about other ac actions that we can do uh, as a community uh, and you may not know, but the um, don't say gay bill that pertained to um, kindergarten levels when it got started, moved up to the high school levels, moved up then to the colleges and universities, and is now out there the, a proposal to make it illegal to mention or to LGBTQ uh, anti-discriminatory practices in businesses. It, it, the bill that's being proposed so far um, for the legislative session starting in January will actually make make it pretty much impossible for equality in Florida to exist. So uh, we need to get out there and be aware of these things when it comes to voting. And if you can possibly do it, see me about joining Equality Florida in Tallahassee for what they call Pride of the Capital Days, all during the legislative session this coming January, February, March. Okay. Prayer requests, please send your prayer requests to Joe Ebbing via email, text, or Facebook Messenger. Also, please see the emails at the end of our newsletter to send your prayer requests to the congregational team. And I made it through the list, except that Joe has one. A big thank you to the team that showed up to the storage unit yesterday. It's been a good part of our day. We reduced this big storage unit down to a five by five from a whopping $315 a month to $21 a month. So thanks to Randy, to Pastor Ed, to Cindy, to Scott, and you're through it. And Jill. Yes, and, and the, the money that we had already spent for this month got prorated so that our rent is now paid all the way through June of next year. Yeah. Um, thank you, guys. <coughs> thank you, Joe, for spearheading that. You're the one who got that started. We appreciate it. Thank you, Randy. Randy's one of those people that when he gets, he gets an idea, we're going to do it. And he kept us to it. <laughs> I want to say one more thing. When we went to do that, we, we I was at the at the big one when we were, and then I went to the little one, and all the stuff had gotten out of the big storage area. We went to the little one, and you, 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 if you if you ever seen the movie uh, uh, Harry Potter, and Hermione, that his friend has that little purse, and she reaches down in it and she pulls, and just keeps pulling stuff out of, or or when they go into their tent. And the tent looks like a four-story building. That's kind of like what I saw when we went to that little. I said, how in the world did they get all of that stuff in there? But it's all in there, and we got a little one. And it's, uh, it's all good. So let's go ahead and encourage each other and show our love uh, with our benediction. Christ has no body but ours, no hands, no feet, no wheels but ours. 
Ours are the visions through which Christ goes passion, goes to the world as a world. Ours are the feet and wheels with which Christ goes about doing good, and ours are the hands with which Christ blesses us now and blesses all the world. Amen. Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, the shepherd comes to you, or signs and cross my life. Behold, throughout the heavens, there shone a holy light. Tell it on the mountain. Over hills and everywhere, oh, tell on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. When the shepherds feared and trembled, when low above the earth, rang out the angels' chorus, that hail of Savior's birth. Oh, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. May God bless you and keep you strong in God's love. May God fill your heart with that love and may that love overflow to everyone that you come in contact with in your community. Go and bless the world with your love. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, I'm going to go. Okay. Did you get your No. It's all, it's over on that. I put it over on that chair. Okay. <laughs> we'll find it.